everyone. I'm Melissa Bethencourt here with Channel 13 at Mothership Coffee in Henderson. This is a woman owned business and we are here for the latest in our series of voter panels. Today we're going to be speaking with a panel of women talking about the issues most important to them in the upcoming 2024 presidential election. First, I want to start by introducing our panel directly here to my right. We have Maria Teresa Lieberman Barraga, a political operative. Next to her, we have Juani Romero, owner of Mothership Coffee. Then we have Jamie Bunnell, a mom of five and a nurse. And we also have Suzette Lagrange, a commercial real estate broker and the former president of the Nevada Republican Club. Again, today we're going to be talking about all the issues most important to them in this upcoming 2024 presidential election. But first, I want to thank you all for taking the time and sitting with me today to talk about this. But honestly, curious to know from each of you, what are the issues most important to you as we approach Election Day? We'll start with you. For me, um, I would have to say that uh, for one, it's the economy. What are these candidates going to do to actually help regular everyday Americans and also as a woman, uh, women's health. You mentioned the economy. Juani, curious with you being a small business owner here in Nevada, does that issue also matter to you and how does it change when you do own multiple small businesses here in Las Vegas? I have a lot of passions and one of them is being women, uh, women and minority owned business and it's amazing to see a candidate out there that looks like me. I think it's also important for my daughters to see a candidate that looks like them. And politics aside, it's just an amazing uh, event and a time in our lives where we get to see that happen. I'm a nurse by profession, so it's an easy, easy segue into my passion being public health and everything from gun violence prevention to uh, making sure that our schools are safe, places of learning, and also equitable access to mental health care. Inflation, um, safety, security, uh, knowing that when I go out to the grocery store, I'm going to be safe, um, first and foremost. Immigration is a concern because it's having impacts on our housing and housing home prices. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's uh, even the wars abroad uh, are very concerning and the number of people that are dying in those wars. A lot of great topics that all of you brought up just now, but I want to go back to the economy because I think that's something that we can all relate to. When I moved here in 2020, my rent at the time was I think $1,500 for a one bedroom apartment. Now it's shot up to 2000, but I hear from people when I'm out reporting on stories, just how expensive it is for them to do basic everyday things, groceries, gas. We always hear, you know, eggs and milk, everything has really shot up. So how has that impacted each of you on a personal level? It has been expensive to do everyday things, drive your car, drive, uh, drive to the grocery store and then do the groceries, <laughs> um, pay your rent, pay your mortgage, um, you know, pay different bills because they're going up, you know, here in Nevada, utilities are always going up. And so you're always wondering why are all of these prices going up? And so I, I think there definitely has to be a, a reckoning of some sort of how do we actually help working people, um, small business owners, people who are just struggling to survive. The more government spending you have, the more money that is circulating, the more the prices start rising. So, you know, really the government needs to start getting a handle on the spending. Let's talk about how government policies affect home prices, affect wages, <laughs> affect food prices, gas prices. The, those all have an impact on what we pay at the grocery store. I think a lot of people are still wondering the same thing. What is the solution, mm -hmm. right? How do we actually move on from this and kind of get people to breathe a little bit and not be so worried about the financial aspect and the inflation? I need someone who's going to be a civil servant who genuinely has a servant heart and who cares about our issues. Um, right now, I haven't heard a policy to address our houseless problem. I haven't heard a policy to talk about the struggles of everyday Nevadans. How is anything that was said the other night going to trickle down and actually affect our lives and make our lives better? We had to take in in-law, like we had to take in adult parents um, because they were facing homelessness because they could not afford their cost of living anymore. They couldn't afford, you know, their wages weren't meeting the demands. And so that is something that, you know, not everyone is fortunate enough to have. Well, I was thinking right now, before we started this panel, we were having that conversation about the American dream, right? It's still 
achievable, especially if you want to be a business owner. There are no limitations when it comes to that and how far you can push yourself. But what I have heard on the other side of this conversation, specifically people in my age range, are the American dream when it comes to buying a home. Is that going to be possible? I look at my situation like, will I ever be able to purchase a home if I don't have help or inherit a property? And when you look, you mentioned this, who's at current home prices and how that's kind of just exploding. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that things are out of reach now for new home buyers? I bought my first house in 1999 and it was $150,000. I mean, my, my mortgage payment was $833. Like, I just, you know, you remember these things. That's crazy. I can't even imagine. Um, you know, and back then that was a lot, but I, I did it on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that it's achievable these days on just a single salary. Coming to Vegas and then being able to buy a home, even at these prices, is still achievable to me, but it's only because I have been able to afford a certain lifestyle with what Nevada has been able to provide for small businesses. When I think about my employees, right, is it achievable for them? And I think that if we can provide more tax cuts and tax reliefs for them, it would be much more achievable in the long term. I don't want my boys or my girls to feel like they have to be in a relationship to have that two-person income household in order to get their first apartment or their first home. Um, I want them to be able to have a sure foundation to achieve those dreams on their own. I want to pivot to something that you mentioned when I first introduced the, the question about what are you most passionate about going into this next election. You had mentioned women's rights, specifically health care for women. We know that in the past few years things have changed quite dramatically with the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Nevada being a sanctuary state, we're in a, I would say, better position, right? Still have some access to those kinds of operations. But are there any concern or is there any concern going into November with what could happen and maybe having all of those um, operations and access to surgeries like that taken away? I'm afraid that if we don't undo that and these states keep passing bans, that is going to be a further drain for resources here in Nevada. Yeah, and I'm, I've covered so many stories on this and it always comes down to what you said, our clinics being overwhelmed, but also the women that are taking time from their jobs, taking time off to drive to Nevada or Las Vegas to get their surgeries done and then going back. Is that curious to know what your thoughts are on all of this? I think our laws that are on the books are very reasonable. Um, it makes abortion access accessible um, you want it to be rare and safe. They should fight those battles at the state level. I believe in states, states' rights. Um, if you don't like it, help change it. Get involved in your community. Get involved with your public officials at that level. What are your thoughts on the cost of child care and any possible solutions to lowering that price? I talk to so many mothers every day who are like, we don't have the resources. There's not enough providers here, there's not enough facilities, there's not enough after school programs that are equitable and accessible to me in my location, depending on what part of town they live in or where they work. And so it's a real concern. Absolutely. I have a lot of friends that are just starting their families and we've had conversations about one of them leaving their job because it ends up being more affordable that way. That's exactly what I did. Daycare is extraordinarily expensive. Uh, I, I don't know how people do it. it it's, it's just really, yeah, it's crazy. I want to talk to you because you mentioned the border at yeah. the very beginning of this conversation. What is your outlook on that? I know that's also a really hot topic. Immigration is a beautiful thing of our country and it's the foundation of our country. It should always, we should always welcome immigration. What is happening at the border, border right now, in my opinion, is more like an invasion. When you have people coming across the border that are not vetted, you don't know who they are, you're, you're basically just letting them in, uh, you know, that's a concern to bring people to America. Because of our opportunities, yes, it's a beautiful thing. Do it lawfully. Don't just come across the border. It's not safe to do that. As someone who actually went through the immigration system um, for 18 years of my life, our immigration system's been broken for decades. If you ask anybody that's been through immigration is that it's because it's there really is no real there's laws but it kind of is just kind of a flip of the coin of how your process goes and actually entering legally 
is not as easy as it sounds. Also goes back to what we've been talking about, the American dream. So many people do want to come here and contribute, but there has to be a process, right? What that process is and what the answer is still up in the air. I just wanted to say thank you to each of you, Suzette, Jamie, um, Juani, and Maria Teresa. Thank you for taking the time sitting with us today, and we will see what happens in November. But thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you.